I can't look at Charlie. Yeah, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't. And look now at we see the strategy unfolding. I will. I will not raise that big. I will raise to forty thousand. Sit two. Raise forty. I almost five exit. Oh, hello. Let's go. This is what Andy is good at as well. C4, re raise. 110. C6, 4. C8, 4. First hand, huh? Should we just put it in? It's good because Charlie really likes to get reads, live reads, and obviously Andy's used to playing live, so like that's why I do think actually Andy's probably the best. C2 call. In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we are taking a look at a very neat spot from Game of Gold. Make sure you check out that show if you have not already. In this hand, we are playing 2 million chips deep at 10,000, 20,000. So... We're playing about 100 big blinds deep. In this spot, Charlie Carroll, under the gun, we are playing shorthanded. He raises it to 40,000 with pocket fives, which is perfectly fine and reasonable. Over to Andy Stacks on the button, he makes it 110,000 with pocket queens. Both players have hearts and diamonds. Around to Josh Arie in the small blind with king of hearts, queen of clubs. I think the standard play in this scenario is just to fold, but if you do think Charlie is opening a little bit too wide, and you think Andy Stacks is three betting a little bit too wide, then, you know, king, queen, ace, queen, ace, jack, those type of hands are okay to four bet bluff with. If you did want to four bet bluff in this spot, you'd want to make it pretty big. Something like eh, 400,000, 380,000, something like that. And then if you get shoved on, you'll just fold. Essentially, you're taking those big offsuit hands and using their big cards as blockers. He lets it go, though. Back around to Char Charlie Carroll getting okay pot odds with a small pair. You must call. You must see a flop. And spin the wheel. Let's see what the flop brings. What a flop. Just fade the wild. I would love to see queen and then a five on the river. This is what I mean, like Charlie does wild shit like this, just like lead and 10%. 30,000. Sip two, bet 30. The flop comes seven, six, four, two hearts. Charlie Carroll has a pair and a straight draw. Andy Sachs has an over pair. Charlie, to my surprise, goes for a tiny lead, 30,000 into 260. Now, in general, you do not want to be leading too often into the pre-flop three better because they're going to have a whole lot of over pairs in their range and a whole lot of decent flush draws. That said, I know Charlie gets out of line and plays exploitative poker where he thinks it makes sense. So when does it make sense to lead exploitatively here? Well, if you think your opponent will ever fold anything to a 30,000 bet into the 260K pot, leading is pretty nice because if he does fold out queen jack, that's an okay success because Andy would have some amount of equity with those hands and he may end up bluffing the flop and maybe the turn and forcing you off the fives. So if you can just get those hands to fold the pot, uh, fold immediately and just give you the pot, that's incredible. Also, if you're not going to get raised very often, leading becomes very viable with a lot of medium strength hands because when you lead tiny, you're going to extract value from those random overcards. And if you are against a hand like pocket queens, if that will not raise, then you just get to see the turn very, very cheaply, which is good because we're behind, but we have some equity. So if you think your opponent's going to fold too often to the lead, leading becomes okay. If you think they are going to raise too infrequently, leading becomes okay. Charlie goes for the lead, 30K. Let's see how Andy responds. Sit four, call. Andy gives us some thought and just calls. And I think this is probably a bit of a mistake because the bet is so incredibly tiny. When you're facing a very, 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 very tiny bet, it's almost like your opponent checked. So the question then becomes, would we check it back on the 7-6-4 board if check two? And I would think, obviously, not, right? Our hand is almost always good, but somewhat vulnerable to being outdrawn in general. So I think we definitely want to put in a bet in this scenario. And if I was in his shoes, I would have made it something like 220K 
like a pretty chunky raise. And yeah, it's bad when you're against a set, but there really aren't that many combinations of sets, only nine, right? And Charlie could very easily have a flush draw, which would make a lot of sense. A hand like Ace-5, suited, right? There's four of those. And also perhaps some medium strength made hands like pocket eights and maybe just some sporadic bluffs like King Jack of Spades. Again, I don't know what Charlie's leading range actually looks like in this spot. It probably is way more specific than a range of very good made hands, marginal made hands, and draws. It's probably one of those three categories primarily. But in general, when you're facing a tiny, tiny bet, especially a tiny lead, you probably, well, I can tell you, you need to raise more often than you may naturally think you should. And you especially want to be raising with hands that are almost always good but vulnerable, like pocket queens. Whatever. Andy calls. Let's head to the turn. Yes! Uh, oh, we, oui, we, oui, 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 Charlie Carrel! <laughs> we, oui, the mean bet! It's because of the mean bet! I love it when you say Charlie Carrel. Charlie Carrel! That's le, uh, <laughs> le bluff! Le bluff! Le semi bluff, Charlie! doing meditation <laughs> this is great he closes his eyes this guy is a legend one thirty. c2 bet 130. Six of hearts. Andy, heart. I love you. But Six I'm, of hearts. I'm rooting for Charlie because he's my teammate. Queen. Blink. The turn is a disaster for Andy Sachs. It is the eight of hearts. Charlie, with his straight, is in a wonderful spot in this exact hand. However, he has to realize he will be against some flushes some portion of the time. And when he is, he is going to be in terrible shape. However, I think the right play in this spot is just to bet as if your opponent has an overpair or a random over card that is a heart. So I think going for something like half-ish pot or two-third-ish pot is perfectly fine and reasonable. And, and that's exactly what Charlie does, targeting those types of hands. Now you may say, shouldn't he check to put in a check raise? Absolutely not. This is a spot on the turn where Andy Sachs is going to check back a lot of hands like pocket queens, for example because he realizes Charlie could have sets or flushes or straights, right? So I think betting in Charlie's shoes is the only play that makes sense. Over to Andy with the over pair and the queen eye flush draw. He has an easy call. At this point, he certainly doesn't love it, but if it goes check, check on the river, he's going to win some portion of the time. And if he improves to a flush, he's going to win a lot of the time. So even though he's also in a relatively dicey situation, this is a pretty easy call. Oh! No! What the f Ooh, we tied! We f tied! Let's go! Hold, don't fold now! Charlie, shove! He has no nine! Shove! <laughs> Charlie! He has no nine! He's capable, huh? He's capable of overbetting like a monkey. C2 bet 550. The river is the wild five of spades. At this point, Charlie has to figure out, does Andy have all that many flushes in his range? And does he have all that many nines in his range? So let's talk about flushes first. Most people on the flop would probably raise with a flush draw when facing that tiny bet, just in general. I think a lot of people recognize high equity draws don't mind raising. So if most of Andy's flush draws are going to raise the flop, or potentially on the turn when he gets there and faces a bet, then Charlie can start to remove flushes from Andy's range, which is great. Next, will he have all that many nines for the top end of the straight? Well, he could have pocket nines. That would make a whole lot of sense. And he could have maybe a little bit of ace nine suited, king nine suited, queen nine suited, but you have to presume those are going to fold the turn unless they have a flush. So... Charlie's really only worried about 
pocket nines, six combinations, not all that many. So if Charlie can remove lots of flushes from Andy's range and most of the nines from Andy's range, then Charlie has a pretty reasonable spot to bluff, especially since Charlie could easily have a flush and you know he could be leading with a hand like nine seven suited on the flop for all I know and then continue bluffing it. And also Charlie could also just have some flushes. So this is a spot where I think Charlie presumes he has a pretty big nut advantage in general because he can have the flushes and the straights and Andy probably does not. When that's the case, betting makes a whole lot of sense and typically you want to bet pretty large. And that's exactly what Charlie does. He goes for a pot size bet. Let's see how Andy proceeds. I mean, Andy is shoving here. No, Andy's gonna fall. No, no, he's shoving. He's shoving? I'm pretty sure. Andy is not shoving, bro. <laughs> Believe me, Andy is maximum calling here. Believe me, if he shoves, I quit poker. <laughs> you sure? Yo, I say, if he shoves, I quit poker. That's quite a statement by Yo Viral. But what do you think? Do you agree with Fedor that Andy will rip it all in with the pocket queens? Or do you agree with Yo Viral that he will basically never shove in the spot? Before we find out what he does, take a second, think about it, and let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And while you're down there, click the like and subscribe button, please. I'm gonna need to know if you're raising on me. You're not raising, you're good, you're good. Whew. All right, so we're, we're either chopping or I'm winning. A nine has snap called, oh. a flush would raise. So we're either chopping or I'm winning. Stupid river. <laughs> stupid, stupid river. <sighs> Let's go. Jump on. Let's go. You play the board? That's a, that's a good one to shoot. After much deliberation, Andy does not raise. He does not call. He lets it go. And look, in terms of who is right that between uh, Yo Viral and Fedor, I think that Andy seems to be a little bit more on the tight aggressive side in general. And I don't think most tight aggressive players are going to take the queen of hearts and turn it into a bluff because they're going to be very concerned that Charlie could just be sitting here with a flush that will not fold. Now, you also have to ask, does Andy think that he has a whole lot of ace high flushes in his range and king high flushes in his range and queen high flushes? And maybe he does, maybe he doesn't, right? Andy knows his strategy better than I know Andy's strategy or you know Andy's strategy. But if Andy knows that he just doesn't have a whole lot of flushes here, he really doesn't want to do a whole lot of bluffing in this scenario. So in terms of hands that want to start bluffing first, it's going to be the ace of hearts. And certainly Andy will have some of those. And then next, the king of hearts, and he's going to have some of those. So... All that considered, I don't really think Andy's going to be jamming this queen of hearts, queen of diamonds, pretty much ever on the river. So while I often err towards agreeing with Fedor, in this spot, I definitely agree with the Viral. I think this is a spot where Andy was either going to call or fold. Now, he did fold. How do we feel about folding? I don't like it. I know that Charlie's capable of bluffing. This is certainly a spot where, like I said, Charlie will have some flushes and he will have some nines, but he's also going to have a whole lot of hands like sets, two pairs, random bluffs, and all of those are going to at least feel somewhat inclined to bluff the river when he can remove a lot of the very strong hands from Andy's range. So when that's the case, I'm usually just going to find the call here and lose some portion of the time. That said, Andy folded, he conserved his stack, and he continued grinding it out. That's it for today. Good luck in your games. Have fun, and I'll talk to you next time.